Tech Summer Preview. I think I was always interested in science from the time I was very little. My father is an engineer and he um, instilled in me the desire to learn lots about physical sciences. So I sort of had a, my background in uh, studying was very much like a Caltech background. So then when I was in, in college I had to take some sort of background courses in biology and I had this one teacher who taught developmental biology and he was a very good teacher and I just I knew that's what I wanted to do. So I took this class and I just said, that's what I want to work on. And I have been doing it ever since. Hi, I'm Ashrita. I'm an electrical engineering major, an upcoming sophomore at Caltech. Um, and this summer I am working at Caltech's Joint Center for Artificial Photosynthesis. I chose to be in engineering because you can have an engineering or a science background and go into any subject later on. And that's what I love about it. When I was growing up, I always wanted to be an astronaut. I guess when we were in kindergarten that was acceptable and over the years that became a little bit weird. During high school I had different uh, subjects that I liked and disliked and I guess I, I stood by math and physics because that always came easy to me. I had to work hard but um, it was definitely way better than say history or politics. I'm Katie Fisher. I'm a rising junior working in Harry Gray's lab. In high school I was a history person and then I took a class in computational chemistry um, at the School of Science and Math and just like fell in love with it. I came to Caltech and declared a chemistry major because I, I still just thought it was interesting but I never worked in a lab before um, and then after working in a lab at Duke uh, the summer after my freshman year I just really fell in love with the whole research process and getting to design and work on my own project. I got into science in high school. Chemistry was actually my favorite subject and I was fortunate enough to have uh, the support to pursue it and go to grad school and make a career out of it. Hi, my name is Garima and I'm currently a rising senior here. Um, I'm majoring in mechanical engineering and minoring in aerospace engineering. This summer I'm doing a project with Professor Kirschwink, who is in the Geological and Planetary Sciences Department. And we're working on um, building a stage that will help us uh, look for lightning strikes on Mars, which may confirm or deny the existence of water. I chose the STEM field uh, because I really like math and science. and since the third grade, I wanted to become an astronaut, so, and that dream never really changed for me, um, so it sort of easily led to the math and sciences, but I specifically chose engineering because I really enjoy building things. It's very satisfying to see something that I made with my own hands, so. When I was in high school, I was looking around, I was, I was very interested in finding a career that was sort of stable, and I thought engineering would be a good thing to go into because you could get hired by a company and get a job, you know, and at that time there were a lot of jobs for engineers, I think that's still true. So my naive assumption, not really knowing anyone who was an engineer, was that, well, this, you know, I should go to engineering school because I liked math and science. I also liked art. I was actually an art major in high school. So now I'm a geologist and we draw things a lot with the computer, but we get to color things in and, you know, there's still that aspect of the work. There weren't so many women doing what I did at the time, uh, so I, I think it was really in graduate school when I learned about the research that was being done by one particular woman who, who was very prominent in the field that I'm in now um, that had a big influence on my life. I heard this, this woman who lives in France and is now, she's in her 80s, but she's very, even still, extremely prominent and travels all over the world and works for the Colors de France. And, I thought the experiments she was doing were fantastic. She gave a seminar and I just thought, wow, that's what I want to be. And you know what? That's what I did and that's what I am. <laughs> so, so she had a big influence even though I didn't really know her. So I think it's important to have people that you look up to and you, know, you, you want to emulate even if they're not really your exact mentors. Well, when I was growing up and in college, during college, all the people that pushed me to, to go into science were men. And it was not because I didn't like women, but because I had no contact to them in engineering. I think that's interesting and it's something that needs to be changed. Right now, I do look up to many different women that are in campus and are professors here. For example, Professor McKeon, which was my professor a couple of terms ago. Besides of her being a pretty knowledgeable person and being such a good professor, she was pregnant during that term that I was a student of hers. And she was really professional, never missed class, 
um, and I just look up to her because whenever I have to be in that position of having kids and a family, I don't want to have that balance that she uh, seemed to maintain. Um, my female role model would probably be Eileen Collins. Um, she's incredible, you've probably never heard of her, but um, she was the first female pilot and first female commander of the space shuttle. And she's gotten the um, French Legion of Honor, which is a really big deal. And before she was an astronaut, she was also a test pilot, which is awesome because you risk your life on a daily basis and that's just really cool. And, you know, flying is cool too. On top of that all, she's also very humble. Um, so she's a really great person and I hope I can do as much as she did. Well, once I got to college and I was taking classes, um, I kind of made my way from thinking I would major in physics to planetary science to geology. And in the course of that, I had classes from a professor at MIT whose name was Tanya Atwater, who was really a fabulous role model because she seemed to be a very nice person and able to do really good research and able to have a kid and sort of handle everything as well as being really like a good scientist and being a nice person, which I thought was really important. She's now retired, but she's, I think, been an inspiration to many of the people of my generation because she was such a successful scientist and she's really uh, genuinely like passionate about her science and so she now spends a lot of time teaching teachers and preparing she does these great animations of earth science topics for you know educators to use and you can go online and watch them and they're really fun so i think you know if i have to pick one person i would choose her